the 6th of September 2024. George Sturdy 7040 has commented on my video, on my video on Sean Quinn. And the question he asked me is, Hey Val, would you be interested? I would be interested on your views on Conor McGregor running for president of Ireland. These are my views. We are in uh, an emergency, a warlike situation where the traditions of our country are being destroyed by a crowd of radical, woke, lefty creeps who have got their hands on the levers of power and the cowardly traditional parties, the ones of those members of those parties who could speak up are too cowardly to do so. I am campaigning this way not because I want to. I have lived my most of my life. I have all I need. I have my farm to look after. And I would still have a video channel, but I would have it on things like engineering and science and other stuff with very little interference in government policy, were it not for the fact that my dark Rosaline Ireland is being destroyed. And that's why I am goaded into action and doing what I do, because I feel that whatever little talents I may have and whatever eloquence or or what do you call it, or rhetorical, is that the word, or the ability to talk and to express my opinions clearly and distinctly is required by my country at this moment in time. And I hate that particular phrase as well, but right now anyway. So what about Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor has succeeded in a, a tough, hard uh, contact sport. He should witness what happened in the Olympics where a man was allowed to box a woman. I would will be making a video on Harry Miller in England who was, a, who was accosted by the Thought Police, the official police force of Humberside, for him posting on Twitter his opinions. And he had to go to the court and he won. We know it all. We know what's happening. We know Enoch Burke is in prison. I've done videos on that. We know we're going to get more and more and more of it. We know the cowardliness of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and the strangeness and the weirdness of Sinn Féin knows no bounds. Should he run for president? Well, he has a big weight of votes behind him. He's very popular among working class people in, in Dublin. If you note with me, and this is something I inherited from my father, Lord and mercy on him. I do boast about being fairly smart, <laughs> but it's, it's in a humorous way. I have a, an honours degree in business studies acquired as an adult. And I'm quite successful. I've stopped virtually every wind farm in the country. I got a notice back yesterday from Galway County Council of a, a, an energy project that I objected to and it was refused. So I am very effective at what I do. Not only that, I solve a lot of problems for people and it takes a big toll on my time because I can't bear to see people being victimised in the wrong. Conor McGregor has this weight of votes. He is on our side. For every one that's on our side, there's 10 on the other side. Conor McGregor and Elon Musk are on our side. That happens to be the way it is. Businessman Donald Trump is broadly on our side. But there are few and far between. Gert Wilders in, uh, in, uh, in Holland and maybe Georgina Maloney. And on some of the things we speak about, Vladimir Putin is on our side, though it's not in exactly the same context. This woke World Economic Forum, um, United Nations International Monetary Fund has succeeded in doing nothing, only destroying communities and people. If Connor is to run for president, he has to get certain 
obstacles to overcome and that's put in there long ago to stop every Tom, Dick and Harry running for president and having a, ball a, a ballot paper 18 foot long. In the recent um, European elections, we had a ballot paper two feet long. And people, I was voting and a person come around and he couldn't make it out. And so they have to have some way to limit the number of people on the ballot paper to those who have a chance of getting in. And that used to be getting the approval of councillors or politicians or TDs or whatever. And that is democratic. The fact that the people of Ireland vote for these idiots is not the fault of the people who drew up the legislation. So Diana tried it and she had to go round to the councils and ask them to give her their approval and she had to sit outside council meetings till the meeting was over because where there's a council meeting, the presidential election takes place at the end of the meeting and that's, that's, that's just justice. And Conor McGregor may not be the type of man who will wait around. So, yeah, give it a go if you want. Please understand what the limitations are. Let them throw a few pounds to a barrister and find out the whole limitations that there are and everything else, and that's it. Maybe the returning officer would tell them to, I don't know, but it'd be no harm to get a bit of legal advice of somebody just to explain what is involved. If he ran and got through, he might win and he might not. Don't forget he'd be... His name will be on the paper in Mayo and Kerry and Donegal, where he's hardly even known. So I'm watery on that whole idea. Hold! Wait. We have a doll election coming up. D-I-L. And we will have candidates running. We had the Ardesh of the Irish Freedom Party recently. Our leader, Herman Kelly, he's imposing the whip. I have to, I have to toe the line. <laughs> I'm under the, I, ne I never actually experienced being the subject of a party whip before. It is a novel experience. But the only thing he said to us was, he wants no funny hats. <laughs> so essentially what he said is he doesn't want anyone dressing up in blue short uniforms or brown short or any kind of Nazi or <laughs> anything like that doesn't want any of that but he doesn't mind the flag he has been at meetings himself so that's the only little restriction <laughs> don't think if I do anything like that it'll be some, something funny it'll be on the pictorial weekly but I am actually under uh, under the constraints of a party would you believe that <laughs> but sure we have to join up with like minded people so the Irish Freedom Party will, would be one for him but the thing is they may run a candidate in his area and I wouldn't like to see him competing because he would probably win there you know the transfers mightn't go he could run as an independent but please pick a place we're not running give, give us a go but he could pick a place and I'm sure if he announced now where he's running None of neither the National Party nor the Freedom Party would run against him there <laughs> if he sticks with it. Fellas like that can be very volatile. Or he could join our party and he could team up with me. And if he had me with a halter on him, like a cow, now I'm going, we bring in a cow to the ball, we'd put a halter on the cow to keep her up straight. Sometimes she'd run towards the ball and she'd knock down the whole place to get in. So a halter, you put a halter on a horse too, or a goat. But um, the thing is, he might need a bit of a halter. Well, he'd have the advice from us and just to tame it down and calm and that. Now, if he got elected for a, it'd have to be a Dublin seat. If he got elected for the doll, he'd have to go there and sign up and all the rest. But he wouldn't have to come in every day. A man like him has more important money making things to do. So he'd come in for important votes and important uh, events and he'd get given his say on certain areas and he could he could ask tell us what he wants us to say for him or we could advise him and we could work like that with him he's a tough bio but you see the thing about it is the toughness isn't enough michael collins was a tough military soldier churchill said he was better than any general he had but Collins had to face the political reality of going to London and signing the treaty. It was, that was the difficult thing to do. Fighting for the independence wasn't 
wasn't hard. It was the negotiations that took place that were very hard and ultimately he signed his own death warrant. Now there'll be nobody dying in the next door, hopefully, and all that, but hopefully we'll put up a bit of a show. You see, Connor, it's hard not to get emotional, I'll tell you the truth. Ireland calls us. Ordinary people, ordinary chaps and ordinary women will do Midland and do okay. But you're in a unique position to get elected and maybe bring in somebody with you. You could possibly get two seats. You could probably do like the Healy Rays where Conor McGregor would, would get two quotas and bring in somebody from the Freedom Party or the National Party on his coattails. That, that, that is possible depending on the area in working class areas. Now, I think I omitted when I was talking about my father with all of my, um, whatever I've achieved in life and whatever brains I have or anything else, I was taught never to lose your contact with the working man. Never depart from working people. Anyone that knows me knows when I go for a drink, I'm stuck in the middle of a crowd of farmers. I'm stuck in the middle of a mechanic or some fellow that goes out to fish for pikes or something like that, or pike or whatever you call it or a fellow that roofs a building. It's not that I shun people of an academic uh, way, or lawyers or solicitors or anything else. I do mix with them too. But I just never, ever could pull myself away from my connection with my roots in rural Ireland as a country gossoon, where the whole fun that I had in life occurred. So I meant to say that, and I inherited that from my father. Now, Conor McGregor is a, a, an ordinary working chap as well. He's from that background, no matter how big a house he builds or anything else. And he should ask himself the question, is he getting the tug on the coat? In the next election, the future of Ireland will be decided. Either people like me, who will fix these creeps big, fix these creeps big time, get Sumter or somebody who represents us or that will do our bidding or will work for us in Leinster House will win or come out with some seats or we will fail. And there's only one bite at this cherry. So I would say to Conor McGregor, do what you wish with the presidency. No, don't put too much capital into it, either money or effort. You can give it a go if you want to. If you get to be president, then it'd be great to have him as our president. And if he does that, please revert back to people on his side to advise him what the decorum and the etiquette of that role is. I'm not convinced it's the way to go. But it'd be better than having a walk in there. And that's what we're going to get the next time. It'll be some woman called, called Mary. She has to be Mary if for some reason. And she'll be a lesbian, and she'll have two partners, and the lesbian partner, the part, and she'll be one third uh, from uh, Islamabad, and she'll be a Muslim or a, a Hindu. That's what you're going to get. But whatever he does, he's not guaranteed a seat. He's not guaranteed to be elected president. I haven't a clue, but he is virtually guaranteed to be elected to Chakdadala as a TD. He will get in there. Choose wisely. Why not? Why doesn't he consult me? I would never speak or reveal that, he'd say. I'd treat him with strict confidence. And we'd work out a plan. And he doesn't have to come into the doll every day. Be there for important matters. Be there for votes. And if nothing else, if he won the election, he would take the seat away from these other creeps. But I hope he doesn't take it away from somebody on our side because the Freedom Party is determined to go in and do their business in there and work hard for the people that elects them. That is the thing. Conor might do that too. You see, people will be ringing him up. Well, what about me house down the road or I'm looking for me granny's medical card? But he can, he'll get expenses for an office. He can open an office there in his house and he can hire some, why not hire some nice 
people, decent people, maybe some unemployed um, young woman, maybe a young mother, rearing a family, maybe a single mother, maybe come in every morning for three hours and she get paid and she looks after all his posts and when he comes in she'll say this is what we have we have mrs brown we have mrs De mr i want it well, all right send her a letter send a letter send it he doesn't have to do it himself that's how all these tds work now my final word for conor mcgregor is it is so sad what's happening in ireland it is reduce you to tears you can do something about it. Select a working class area. Run your candidate, run yourself. Maybe even run somebody with you that would maybe get two seats. Remember the Healy Rays far away from you. They got two seats. Or maybe you could join the Irish Freedom Party and endorse the rest of us and ask people to vote for us. Every little helps. There'll never be another chance. I wish him luck in whatever decision he makes. And if he decides not to get involved, well, then we have to plough on the best as we can. The other thing, of course, is to put some financial assistance towards our party uh, and uh, give us a bit of financial help, a few posters and stuff like that. That would help as well. I'm sure he will do something like that. And uh, I'd say there's a lot of people who voted for people before puberty who just do it as a protest vote. And he would steal all that vote, put that out by Richard Boyle Carrot and Paul Murphy and them Egypts out, out on the rear. I'd say that that's a way to be lovely if he ran in Blanchardstown. He'd, he'd fix that out rather like a Gorman idiot out anyway. So I can say no more than that. That is my feeling on it. I don't want to waste any more time and I don't, don't think I should be asked again. I've given my view already. I've given now my view here. Go ahead, whatever happens. He can run for the Dáil first. The Dáil election comes up first. The presidential election is in the future. It's up to him. I can't say any more. He'll not be, he'll not be listening to a farmer with cows, I suppose. I suppose that's the way. Best of luck to him anyway in all his endeavours. Bye bye. Thank you.